What's cracking, BDG people? For the last probably four or five months, you guys have seen my face on our YouTube as well as Noah's face. But the rest of the team is here because we're going to be doing podcasts like this. You know, we got an office for a fucking reason to make team podcasts, okay? And starting this week, you guys are watching this on Sunday. These are going to come out weekly, Thursday, throughout the summer. And then most of our content throughout the actual season itself will be this type of content, a little round table, square table, built by animal with his bare fucking hands, us yelling at each other back and forth. Um, so as we go on, this is a, a little bit of a learning cur curve for us. We have Mr. Judge Sexual Patterson III. We've got Tony over here, Mr. Don's McChopless real quick. Bang. Love to see it. Don's. Yeah, whoa. Bang. And y'all know Animal. Um, so us four are going to roll out a lot of content throughout the year together. This will probably be our main style going forward. So I think we're just going to kind of roll with it, adapt as the year goes by, and figure out the best style for us. The way we're going to take this first episode, at least, is go section by section. We're going to go a little NFL news and notes, some breaking news type shits. We're going to get into the meat of the episode, where today's episode is... Mid-round running backs. Yeah. Is the dead zone still a thing? Yes. We're talking about dead dun, zone dun, running backs dun. today. And then at the end of every episode, we're going to get into some just like inner office stuff, what's going on with the brand behind brand. the scenes, and have a little bit of fun, all right? In this economy, we need some fun. Are y'all ready to roll? Ready. Yeah, I'm ready. You say no? Yeah, but I'm ready. Ike, I'm ready. I haven't said this in a long time, but hit the intro. Tony. Breaking news, Tony. It was <laughs> <laughs> you had one job to do, and I, I you had did two it. jobs to do. It was to show up on time. You almost didn't do that, and it was to bring <laughs> our talking points for the news and notes section. And I almost didn't do that either. <laughs> Correct, but I did. You went point five both. on each of those, so you got one point out of two. Awesome. What are we working with today? So none of this news is breaking. Uh, it's not a, a lot of this stuff we've already kind of heard, but I wanted to bring it up, see what we think about. Matthew Stafford has been dealing with a lingering elbow injury. It doesn't seem to be super serious, but it keeps getting talked about. So is this something that you guys are concerned can be dragged into the season? No. No, no you're not concerned. I mean, all. like, they'll talk about it, but I don't think it's going to make a difference. The dude's been playing for how long now? He knows what the NFL is about. He knows you have to play with injuries. He's, he's got the famous clip of getting hit and absolutely crushed and yeah. still playing. Like, that's Matt needs, Stafford. He just needs a little R&R. &R. Get a little PRP injection, R&R. &R. Yeah. He'll be good. I will say, I will say, I moved Justin Jefferson ahead of Cooper Cup in my wide receiver rankings. Because of this? Not because of this. I wanted to already, and this was kind of like the tiebreaker for it in case it's like in flames during mm -hmm. the season. So I kind of like J. Jeff over, uh, over Cooper Cup right now. But, I mean, I would you know love to have either one of them. Wasn't he dealing with this injury in the playoffs, too? That's what I'm saying. These guys are football players. They're always dealing with injuries. Like, this is preseason talk. They just need something to talk about. Like, we need something to talk about. They need something to talk about. You know what my favorite is. part of this injury was? That's all it is. It was like, uh, so Dr. Jesse Morse, I was, I was asking him a question about something I had, like, a personal problem with in my neck or back or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's like, he was like, you know, if I were treating you, like, I would do these, like, bone marrow fucking infusions. You'd get 20 shots in one day. And then I see him tweeting about Matt Stafford's thing. And he was like, if I were treating this, I would, <laughs> I'd go straight for the bone marrow. And I'm like, people are fucking out of control. But I think I mean, that's probably the best way it. to do it because it probably just, you know, boom. Yeah. That good marrow in you. Yeah, hell yeah. I, I was listening to a podcast about it where they were like, it's one of two things. And the really concerning thing, if it was that, there's no way he'd be able to throw right now. So it's, so it's not, you know, we're only technically doctors over here, but it's not that thing. So... Uh, concern level right now, I don't know, like a three out of ten. Yeah, none three at all, even yeah. less. Two. Wow. Like, yeah, I, just, I have no concerns. What if Matt Stafford was blind in one eye? <laughs> it's a different story. <laughs> I'd still still take him, but, you know, he'd have to fall down my draft board a little bit. Okay, fair. What else we got? Uh, we also got Jamison Williams. Likely not ready to be for week one. I know I got that out of order. Yeah, you still, do. But <laughs> it's all good. Up. Either way. Likely Jameson. not ready for week yeah, one. Yeah, see, it's kind of confusing, isn't it? <laughs> Likely, likely, likely not ready. Won't for week be one. ready for week one. That's how you he say is that. He's not likely. Not, not likely. Just put the not before. That's the what it was. <laughs> That's what we were missing. Yes. Right. Uh, this is not a surprise. I mean, super, super yeah. late ACL tear. I think the whole sentiment leading up to the season was that he was probably going to be back second half of the year. Grabbed him in the Scott Fish Bowl in case we have a fuck. So did I. So oh, did wow. I. Honestly, and you know what it was? I thought he was going to be playing a little bit earlier. I knew about the injury. I think I just misjudged how late it was. 
And yeah. I don't know why I took him because I don't feel good about it at all. No, I feel I, like he's going to take some time to get acclimated. But plus, he's got Zach Wilson. Like, there's just not no, a he's lot. Got he's just, he has oh, something, Goff, he has something yeah. worse than Zach. Yeah, he's got Jared Goff. <laughs> I was thinking of. Um, you know what, yeah, dude? Jared I was Wilson. thinking about Jared Goff the other day. Hear me out. Like, obviously, the Lions are the Lions, but Jared Goff had some like monster years in LA when he had everything around him going right. Right? Like the Rams had a good offensive line, great offensive system, a lot of good weapons. I don't think the situation, if Jamison Williams is healthy, is that much different than the Rams situation. I mean, you're talking about a team that won, what, two games last year? But, but you're talking about the Lions, who actually won, yes, but their games that they lost were very, very, I hate saying that, but they lost so many games by, like, a field goal, three points. Like, they kicked a field goal, and then they took it back. Like, random shit. They had the, the, the worst losses. That team is so much better than Dude, the record. Really They're competitive good, every week. Really good yeah. line. Really good weapons. Like, any interest in Jared Goff as a QB2 in Superflex Leagues? Yes. I think he might be yeah. like a sleeper QB2. I've been, I drafted him last year as a sleeper, so, like, I'm still on him well, this year. Was, I think he's only gotten... not sharp at all. Well, what I'm saying is I think he's only gotten better. So, like, weapons, everything around Hawkinson, him has just improved. Swift, I'm on Ra, DJ Shark, maybe Jameson Williams. He's basically free in your drafts. He's he is yeah. free, but I would feel... It's not the I, same I situation. Feel great. Yeah, there was a, a point in time where like Jared Goff was like the next up and coming young quarterback in LA, and you, yeah. he was like twenty four, just came off like a forty six hundred yard season. We had no idea that it was because I still think else he could play. Like awesome. I think he's a very solid, he's a very solid quarterback, especially for for fantasy. Like as long as he doesn't have those complete meltdown games where he gets like a, you know ninety yards passing and just doesn't do anything for you. He's a very serviceable guy, especially in Superflex. I'm getting him as my QB three, QB four. Yeah. So I'm as, like, as a QB, I like that a lot more. If like I don't QB3 have to upside. start him in a super flex, I'm fine with it. But like QB two is, I think, just that's not it. I gotta move him up. I'm moving him up. That's it. I convinced you. I'm moving him up. Moving quarterback up. thirteen. Oh, wow. Head of Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> 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 All right. I mean, what else? Aaron Rodgers could be could be in for a rough year. It could be. I agree. Do we want to do a fucking hot take right now? Do that it. Jared Goff is more fantasy points than Aaron <laughs> nah, Rodgers. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I kind of want to. I kind of want to do it too. Let's, let's do it. Wow. Let's let's that's insane. <laughs> Oh. Could happen. It's you guys happen. are being hot for no reason on that. That's what we do, baby. That's what happens when you're We're hot. hot for no reason. <laughs> Six four for nothing. Yeah. Six. <laughs> all right. So uh, what else we got in the news front? Is that it? Uh, no. That's way. all I really got. No, that's not what. I, no, 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 no. That's kind of all I got for like injuries. Russell Gage. It, it seems like he escaped something serious, but I don't even know if he, you know, did yeah, get fuck him. Anyway. Yeah, it doesn't matter. matter. Let's talk about. Uh, do you care? Does anybody care about hard knocks? Or we just I didn't watch it. Okay. Yeah, so I haven't watched it yet. All right, all right. I guess that on. means I, I I care, but it's more one of those things where like I'd like to. I think I watched it. You like, like binging it, kind of when it's all. Not out. even like binging it. Like I like to watch like two. I'll wait for week two to come out, and then I'll watch week one before it and go right. You know, the Jamal Williams clip fired me up. Everybody's great when they're not tired. The champions is when they tired. That's when the real champions come out. That's when a real dog come out. Because if you go piss like a puppy, stay on the porch. And let the big dogs eat. Let them on the fucking field. Have some heart. I get emotional about this. I'm about to cry because I care about y'all. Last year wasn't it. Everyone's talking about yeah. that. That's all I see. I thought it was an overrated clip. Really? Oh, I thought dude, it was that was a golden clip. Yeah, it was okay. That was great. It was good. It was nothing that was, was like that inspiring. Yeah, I get he's passionate, but I don't know. Especially when he Every, dropped the big dogs, though. That was cool, a cool line. I'm surprised we haven't gotten tagged more on social than that. But yeah, for real, I don't know. I thought the I thought most of the words were just kind of like cookie cutter words. You Which, think it's because it's Jamal Williams? Like it would have held more if it was someone else. No, I, I like Jamal Williams. Has always been that fucking dog, though. Yeah. He's always had like good speeches. I just thought in particular that was getting a little bit too much hype. You think, think it would have been better if it was Jared Goff? <laughs> Way worse. <laughs> Way worse. I think if anything, we've just been starved of football content in general, so it, it just hits in Dude, this time of the year. Anything gets the adrenaline flow, and you're like, yeah, it's just fucking football. That it's locker room's got to be just stacked with fucking tissues. Um, did you? Stand, there was another clip of the Dan Campbell like talking to the team about it. he was a. Uh, he was like almost crying too. He was like, "You guys just gotta trust me." And I was like, yeah. "Bro, you got him doing it over there." Jamal was like thirty feet away doing super it. Super passionate guy. He, he, he love the passion in Detroit, man. He cries. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the last... fucking New England backfield right now. Yeah. Damian I, Harris kind of on the trade block a little bit. I don't know if he's on the trade. I think they said they'd entertain a trade, which may might be the same thing. James White just announced his retirement. Um, I've been like full steam ahead on Ramondre and. You know, something I always say is when there's smoke, there's fire, and there's a lot of smoke going around just, like, everybody that they don't like in this yeah. fucking backfield Yeah, right I now. like Ramondre. The problem is, like, I need to know what's going to happen with Damian Harris before I really, like, buy into Ramondre. Like, I, I like him, but is Damian Harris going to be there? Because as good as Ramondre is, if Damian Harris is there, it's still just volume taken away from him. Yeah, I'd give it, like, a 5% chance Damian Harris is not on the Patriots this year. 
Yeah, I have a feeling he's not going anywhere. Like they're they're relying on the run game. Like they know how important depth is. Like the Patriots have been doing this shit for years. Like you got a second year quarterback, you're gonna want to rely on your your beast fucking huge running backs. Bro, they've been talking about how shitty this offense has looked at camp with like Matt Patricia running the show mm-hmm. and stuff. They're like, it was the first time in, in like 22 years they went away from the offense that they've been running, and everything out of that camp is just like, yeah, isn't it Matt Patricia and Joe Judge? Yeah, it's, it's like two fucking that's horrific bad news fucking bears running that offense. Yeah, I saw something where it was like Mac Jones looked better last offseason coming in as a rookie. I mean, I, I could see it. it. I mean, it's a new system, and it's just like they're trying to pivot things really, really. Um, no James White, though, is really big, I think, for Ramondre. I, uh, I don't think so. Don't think so? Was I was going into your projecting James White not to be playing. Yeah, I thought he was going to get cut, honestly. So, uh, I mean, Ramondre is probably the guy taking the I think pass t- it down. I think Ty Montgomery is going to be fucking annoying. Yeah. I, I don't it. think, think Ramondre and Damian Harris are going to split – the in between tackle work, they're going to both average like twelve carries a game, and then all the other passing work is going to go to like Ty Montgomery or some other bullshit guy we don't even know of. Yeah, I think Ty Montgomery is like third down guy. That's what he's that's basically. What I've been hearing he's like a wide receiver, week. like naturally. So I mean, it's a good you know that's his that's his position basically. He's it's, just playing wide receiver in the backfield. The the amount I've hyped up Ramondre as being the pass catcher there, and just like what I've been seeing out of out of camp about Ty Mont. Ty Mont would be like the perfect person to annoy the fuck out of you from the Patriots backfield. Yeah. He's like, I've never seen someone more fit for the role. There's the two rookies, too. Yeah, I don't Kevin think they're going to do anything. Probably not. Nah, they already got a lot up, up top there. So today, the Patriots actually have their first preseason game against the Giants. What are you looking for in that backfield in terms of snap counts? Uh, like, would you rather not see Ramondre on the field? Is that is that a good indicator that he could rather be, see him first? You'd rather see him first and then, like, I'm get trying to early? figure out, like... Well, the Damian Harris thing would be like, if we see him at all, does that mean like, yeah, they're sticking with him? Or if we don't see him, does that mean they're definitely trading him? Like now I'm I'm in my head on like... I think what's going to happen... Well, I wonder... I mean, it all really just depends on how many series Mac Jones gets. Mac Jones gets one series. So whoever's riding with Mac Jones... Yeah, I is, think they'll split. The I think they'll split flag. series. I think it'll be like Damian Harris will get the start. Ramondre will get like the next two snaps. And then I think it's going to be a shit show for a minute. Yeah. Hopefully by like week two or three, they... they I'd imagine they're, they're going to keep their starters out there because it's a new system. They're gonna have to like have them, want them some real game time yeah. for a while. Yeah. So hopefully we'll see a little bit more. On the Giants side of things, I was hearing that Wandell Robinson could be their slot guy. I've heard some really good reports. Yeah. I Wanda. wanna know what's going on with Kadarius Tony. Like he's the he's guy outside who, guy. He's the only guy I care about on the Giants. Yeah. I listened to a good beat uh good beat report podcast yesterday. I think uh Tony's just missed a lot of time. They're, they're like every yeah. other practice he's leaving. He with seems like like a guy just doesn't have the work ethic, but this the talent is there and like that event in the NFL like that can't you can't do that. Like yeah. they're not gonna let that fly. So I'm very like is Wanda Robinson gonna just take his spot and just come in and No, nah, Tony would be the outside guy. I think Tony's like secured a spot as long as he's on the field. Supposedly Kenny Galladay's look like absolute shit. Yeah. Everyone's like Colin Johnson is outplaying the shit so out. So they're gonna have Kenny Galladay. On the outside with Tony and Wandale in the slot. I'm, I'm like, kind of excited to see what happens in New York this year just because I think the entire offense is going to be a little bit better. Yeah, it's a do-or-die year for so. Jones. Daniel yeah. Jones is just so bad. Yeah. yeah. It's, well, there's Daniel only so Jones. far the offense could go because of him. Yeah. But the other, piece, the other pieces have been, like, unusable for years now. So, at least they're, like... Semi. Do we even mention Saquon? <laughs> <laughs> no one even said Saquon. <laughs> uh, Do you no. expect to see him tonight? Well, I actually not. just saw on the Prize Picks line. I think had him at like eighteen and a half rushing yards, which feels high. Except yeah, he if he gets do any sh- snaps at all, I feel like he can Saquon, just do that. Saquon, eighteen and a half carries. rushing yards. He got Gary Brightwell at twenty three and a half. I might take the under on Saquon. Yeah, the under is the is the the definite safe play. Obviously, he can bust one off and you know crush that line. But what's he going to have? Four carries. Five carries for eleven yards. Yeah, that. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like he did, he was he was having full games where he wasn't getting eighteen yards last year. You know? It's kind of weird now because I feel like for a while we had the um, we had like the schedule down for preseason how shit would work. Like week one, barely any snaps. Week two, a little bit more. Week three, you know, a full half, and then week four, nothing. But now there's only three preseason weeks. Yeah, so it's like hard to get a gauge on what's going on. I think the most important thing is just following the starting quarterback when they're on the field. See what the starter snaps are. Yeah. yeah. Um, Saquon, I mean, I hope he plays. It'd be nice to see him. With the other game tonight, Tennessee Titans, Baltimore Ravens. Uh, are we watching anything there? Any uh, camp battles that we like? I want to see Malik Willis, thirteen and a half rushing yards. But I mean, he's not. He's not competing with Ryan Tannehill. Oh. No, but it's something like, that like you just want to see him play and see like how he looks. Yeah, I guess I Traylon was, Burks. Traylon Burks. Yeah, yeah he, he does out there. I'm looking for Traylon and uh, and Kyle Phillips. I like yes. the rookie yeah. slot wide receiver. Apparently, he's like on the starting like. I think he's the first stringer. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Starting they slot. got nothing else going on there. I actually Tra- picked. I think I picked up Kyle Phillips and Scott Fishbowl. I think I did too. Trail on he's been one of my favorite fourth round picks. Fours, right? Yeah. 
Jalen Burks can get a lot of exercise tonight. I mean, yeah, I'm excited to see him. I'm assuming Dobbins is not playing. I'm assuming Robert Woods is yeah. probably not playing. So nothing like nothing really interesting that I'm looking for because the starters aren't really going to be in there. Do you think we could get a glimpse though was, into who the number two receiver could be in Baltimore? I was just Baltimore? gonna say like, do we like see like Lamar and Rashad Bateman maybe have a little uh, connection tonight that could if be they even play? Well, I don't know if they're gonna play. Yeah, this whole like Nick said, this whole thing with the new preseasons. I don't know what they actually are yeah, doing. They've with got the first game now, but they've got pretty hefty over unders for both Tyler Huntley and Brett Huntley for Baltimore. So it doesn't feel like Lamar yeah, is going like to get I can on the see field. him getting a series maybe, but if not, I wouldn't even be surprised if he gets nothing. He's just sitting there and no pads on the sideline. No debate. Bateman's obviously the one because behind him, it's awful. Well, the one is Mark Andrews. though. Is I think maybe what yeah. Tony was talking about. It's like, as far as like, yeah, it's you know, wide receiver. One is probably Bateman, but the actual number one target is Mark Andrews. Yeah, it's going to be Andrews, going to be Bateman, and who I, I don't think it's going to fucking matter behind them. There's not going to be any other. I don't even know the other guys. They're like Devin Duvernay and. Duvernay is like some shit. Who the fuck else is it? I don't even know their names because I don't care. They're James irrelevant. Crochet, Devin Duvernay, yeah. Duvernay, Tylen Wallace is a all irrelevant. Prospect, but all irrelevant. Is right. Boykin still there? Yeah, who cares? Fuck, I remember him for a fuck year. Fuck the Ravens receivers outside of Bateman. Uh, I got more news if we want to keep going. Baker Mayfield looks like the quarterback one. I think we all kind of knew I'm that surprised. was going to come to. You like DJ Moore better with Baker there? Yes. I don't how think much it actually more? matters. I think it's like, like the same. Compared to last year, how much more? I don't know. What's he going ADP-wise from last year? Because last year, I feel like he was still going in the fourth round. He's yeah. going in the fourth. Yeah. Still going the same spot. It's like mid-fourth. I like him. I mean, it, I'd have to see who like is there, and maybe I would take someone over him. But, like, I'm, I'm in on DJ Moore this year. Baker Mayfield, would he's you, so much better than Sam Darnold. Are you sure? Like, would you yes. actually be surprised if Sam Darnold came in to play games after Baker Mayfield, like, stinks it up for I think if Baker weeks. gets hurt, that's the only reason. That's like, the they're only not going to, like, take Baker out and put in Sam. Like, they already know Sam sucks. They're done with Sam. Yeah. They wouldn't have fucking gotten Baker Mayfield if they weren't done with well, Sam. Baker costed them, like, a fifth-round pick. Exactly. Like, was, so, like, they're just going to ride him out for the year and see what happens with the team. Downfall. Baker Mayfield. For both those guys, those were both top three picks in the same draft class. Could you imagine being the Panthers or even a Panthers fan and you're like, <laughs> and like retroactively <laughs> looking at that? You're like, person we, third have two, <laughs> we have two picks in the top three. We spent them both on quarterbacks to assure that we get our guy, and you missed on both of them. But Baker had like the the rookie year was like dynamite. You were like so sure that he was going to be a hit. He Slam did dunk. have that rookie year that was good, but it was also, I mean, everyone. You know, when you, when you dive deeper, you see, like, all the good games were against teams that were below 500 and shit. And, like, it's yeah. obviously... But Darnold never even did that. He was just shit from the start. Exactly. So, like... But if they switch spots, maybe Darnold goes on that, like, one... Dude, Darnold one played last year. And, and they both end up here anyways. No, he was terrible. He had rushing touchdowns that saved his fantasy, like, games. And that was it. Like, he was so bad from a football standpoint, from a fantasy standpoint. Like, he was just terrible all around. I think Baker has such a higher ceiling. Probably the same floor, but such a higher ceiling than Darnold. Not good. Still not that high, though. Yeah. Well, it's you know, like a nine-foot ceiling. It's not that big, <laughs> but, like, you know. Um, other quick news. Khalil Herbert got some run with the ones. Uh, I know we're going to probably touch on him later. Fucking Herb gang, baby. David Montgomery. Is he in that dead zone a little bit? He's, like, on the cusp. He's on not the cusp. in He's that. He's, like, really undraftable for me this year. Yeah. Undrafted. He's, He's been so going, like, like, late third. He would, he, have was, to, he would have to fall into the eighth or ninth round for me to draft him so right let's, now. Uh, maybe we uh, use this to swing into our uh, mid-round running back conversation me. here. Yeah. Because uh, Clue Herbert, he's not in that you know dead zone. But David Montgomery is right on the cusp. So he starts it. He's basically the start of I don't have him on the list because I went fourth to eighth round. But he's like 3'9", you know, 3'10", wherever. So David Montgomery... Doesn't make the list, right? So what 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 exactly is the list? Round four through eight running backs per sleeper ADP? Yes. Okay. You want me to list all of them? No. Yeah, there's too many. There's guys a whole list, them. so I figured we would pick a couple to talk about. You know. Well, I think the 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 topic is basically we're going to try and find out if there is a RB dead zone again because there's been rumors saying that this is the year where like it's a great year to draft running backs in the rounds from you know four to eight or six to ten. You know those that RB dead zone. And I just kind of want to investigate that because I think there are a couple of guys here that are a pretty uh, solid, pretty solid uh, options. How many guys in total are on that list? Do you know, All right. there's like 15. It looks like 15. Yeah, Ike will put the list on the screen. I'm looking at this list right now, and there's like three or four guys I could see myself drafting. If it, it feels fucking dead, yeah. Do we, should we go one by one decide if they're dead or alive? Or is that like too many? It's too many. I feel like there's I like, feel like we the, just do there's quick. a couple of names here that obviously stand out. Like I think the first three on the list. We can, yeah, let's let's talk about it. So the first name on the list is Brees Hall. He's going here strictly because of you know the fact that he's a rookie and there's the unknown. He's a highly you know talented running back. Everyone's assuming, but he's on the Jets. Yeah, going I'm, in basically the four hundred one. 
Yeah, I'm out on Hall there. You think he's Me dead? Too. I get, if I have to choose between dead and alive, I'm going dead. I feel like Carter is going to be used enough that it's going to take away from like two-minute drills, four-minute drills, a lot of valuable shit. Mekhi Becton now out for the fucking year, which was supposed to be like the anchor of their offensive line. We don't know what Zach Wilson is. I don't know. This could. I, I feel like this could end up being a committee, and this is one of those situations where everyone's like, oh, he's so talented, I'm just yeah. going to look past seven red flags. Just super hyped about a rookie that coming in this year. Yeah, and he's not even a first. If he was like first-round draft capital, I'd, I'd understand. Like, it's easy to be like, Najee Harris, every year there's a rookie running back that like blasts off, but it's also like... It's not the same. Yeah, Man, right. I feel like if, he, if he was drafted in the first round, though, he'd be going so high. Yeah, People he would, would lose yeah. their shit if he was... The Here's first my... Uh, that tells you something different from the Jets. My yeah. scenario for you. You're in the fourth round. You drafted. You have Cooper Cup, Jamar Chase. You were at the 112. I don't fucking know. You have two wide receivers, and uh, it's super flex. You took a quarterback. It's the fourth round. You need a running back. You're looking at Brees Hall, Travis Etienne, and Antonio Gibson. Are you taking a running back there, or are you going to keep going with that one? Yeah, you got it. It's the fourth round. You don't have a running back. This is why I hate the back half of the... of the I'm going, here. yeah, I would almost always, looking at how the drafts play out, it's got to be like a wide receiver running back start from the rip. But, yeah, if I'm sitting here. Uh, you got no running backs. You need one. Like, who's your. I'm who's probably going to take ETN here. I'm taking ETN as well. Now, here's why. I, I figured you guys would say that. Why? Obviously, Brees Hall and <laughs> ETN are both the hard unknown. Questions we They're both on, like, you know, low-end teams. Why ETN like so confidently over Hall? Whereas like he already played a year, like you know, got hurt right away, didn't do shit. He's on the Jaguars. It's just why he's the opportunity to be not necessarily a workhorse, but get a majority of the touches on and a majority of the passing down work as well. Get him. That's it. <laughs> I, I mean, like James he's, Robinson he's used to playing the judge role. <laughs> James <laughs> Robinson, <laughs> <a> lawyer. <laughs> James Robinson is there, but he's coming off that Achilles injury. I'll be, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. All the hype about James Robinson. Over there the is hype. Week, there is hype. I'm not like fantasy hype, but just like the videos of him, you know, running and like sprinting and stuff have made me a little bit cautious mm-hmm. as a guy. So who's like like the really situations are very similar. There's both another guy there that can take work from them. You know, this is just. ETN, I'm, I'm very confident that because he's playing with Trevor Lawrence again, um, that he's going to be really, really highly utilized in the passing game. And if you're going to be like a running back in a shit offense, like you have to have the pass catching role. Yeah, yeah. And I'm confident he'll have that. Uh, I follow like the Jags camp pretty closely because I've been so high on ETN and like everything is just saying ETN's like the, the number one playmaker there by fucking a mile. And they're just trying to figure out what's behind him at this point. So it's like everyone on this list has fucking red flags all over the place. For uh, sure. ETN but, feels like a guy who has the highest ceiling to me without having to be like, this guy got injured, this guy got injured, this guy got injured. Everyone else, I feel like, is really fucking risky. Can I throw out a name that I think I would take over all those guys, though? No. Is that okay. on this list? Yeah, oh. it's on that list. Yeah. A.J. Yeah. Dillon. A.J. Dillon. Give me A.J. Dillon over Brees Hall and Travis Etienne. That's a hot-ass take. Is yeah. it? Yeah, for sure. You're too touchdown dependent with A.J. Dillon is my problem. But it just feels so sure. I don't but know. His, his like, I know ceiling's going to be so low if Aaron Jones doesn't get hurt in comparison well, to the rest of these or guys. Or if the Packers just aren't good. Like, we're forgetting the fact that, you know, it's this is a, a 37 or 38-year-old Aaron Rodgers who's all drugged up, doesn't probably even care about football <laughs> anymore. And now he's got his best friend, best wide receiver, not playing with him anymore. He's got to throw to fucking Alan Lazard. Like, dude, this guy might be checked out. I'm just the, so, the, like, the off Packers, the Packers. The Packers offense, this is definitely like a year where they could be super de- – their like, offensive line. Mine is like kind of in low key. And yeah, like they could easily well prove right me now. wrong because Aaron Rodgers, he's great. But like, I'm just so like Packer. I'm, they're so Bakhtiari last year, like fucking pulling up yet. I don't know what's going on with him. They got another injury on the line. I mean, on AJ Dillon this year, but if you threw him in in the in the range where like Etn and Brees Hall are, I'd be out on him. Yeah, I, w- I would take him over Brees Hall. I don't know about AJ Dillon team. or Damian Harris. AJ Dillon. Dillon for sure. I don't know. I, Damian Harris is so incredibly low on. Damn, I take him last on this don't list. Disrespect really? AJ yeah. Dillon Bro, the guy like had 15 that. touchdowns last year. I know it's something that's not easy to like yeah. replicate again. But this like, AJ you would Dillon take Damian Harris. You would take Damian Harris after Devin Singletary. Yes. What the? You're fuck? stupid. <laughs> I don't know. Damian Harris. Sure, he was decent last year, but Ramondre looked even better than him. You would take Damian Harris after Christian McCaffrey. Uh, no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that would be ridiculous. ridiculous. That's crossing the fucking line. <laughs> I don't know. It's just way too crowded of a backfield there. Like, Damian Harris is going to have... He's going to get six points every week, I feel like. All right. Here, well, so, I would say, you, if you're off Damian Harris, then I would say, speaking of crowded backfields, Elijah Mitchell is a guy who had a great year. Everyone's kind of, like, nervous about him because of the fact that we know... Um, what's your fucking stupid... Tyrion Davis-Price? No. Jeff, Jeff Wilson. Wilson? No. The, the coach. coach. Trey oh, Shanahan. Shanahan. Wait, did you see the report on Trey <laughs> Sermon yesterday? 
Dude, he's back. He's so fucking <laughs> so back. back. Yo, I've never needed anything more than a Trey Sermon fucking resurgence. A sermon, Sermon? We need the we fucking were Sermon. We were early. <laughs> yeah. We were fucking early. We got Apple stocks at fucking 13 cents. But that's exactly the thing, though. It's like, Elijah Mitchell has a great year. You think he's for sure going to be the starter, and then you start hearing fucking I reports. I can't trust a single fucking report out of 49ers <laughs> camp after last year. I, I think Elijah Mitchell, to start the year, will be the guy, but just it, like every single year and every situation that they have with their running backs— any minor inconvenience, any slight injury, any bad performance, he's out of there. He's the got the shortest. So fucking uh, so short. Yeah, I mean, this is our resident 49ers expert, so I would hope that you know you have the deets and you know exactly I do what have you're talking deets. about. All right, cool. Elijah Mitchell will be cool. For <laughs> that was a funny ass tweet. Jay Wack, thank you, Browns, for continuing to send the worst season ticket members gifts in the history of sports. Send this hat. That's fucking cool. Classic. Oh wait, we got a snacks tweet. What am I looking to going back to the other section? What am I looking for for tonight's tonight in the Giants game? How atrocious this offense really is. How Dable dresses for a game. How many times the broadcast shows future Ring of Honor inductee Joe Judge? How many times Evan Neal gets beat? <laughs> I like a, how Brian Dable dresses. Yeah, incredible. Sorry, you're going on Elijah Mitchell. Um, yeah, I think I think uh, he's a guy that I'm willing to draft in that kind of dead zone range, but. Yeah, I would be looking to move off of him, like, any time I can. I know that's not a great strategy to, like, draft someone being like, oh, I might be able to trade him. But I would feel very unconfident about Elijah Mitchell. I'm comfortable taking him as, like, an RB2. Like, as my RB. Like, I already have, like, I took a, you know, Jonathan Taylor, Derrick Henry first round or whatever. And I'm coming back. It's the fourth round. There's Elijah Mitchell. I'm comfortable taking him as an RB2 because he has the upside of an RB1, and he has the downside of a fucking RB0. But, like, you know... His I'll take floor, that is, upside. floor is really low. But I'll if take I, that upside. If I started with multiple wide receivers, quarterback, tight end, Mitchell's like one of the guys on this list that I would I don't, be happy I don't getting. think he actually has that upside to be a running back one, though. Because even, even if he's the guy and he's performing well, I still think other guys are going to get enough work. He, he had yeah. 20 carries many times last year. Yeah. You don't know who's getting but the that, valuable that work. That who's like getting the goal line work, who's getting the pass catching work. Yeah. So, I, you know what it, I'm predicting? Sorry, it's this weird, like, conundrum. Don't fucking apologize. What? A, okay. You fucking I apologize. It no, I take you, it back. I, no, fuck you. I already have it. Oh, that's the last one you're getting. It's in the fucking <laughs> pocket, dog. I think it's this weird conundrum where it's like, if he gets enough work to be, the, to be an RB1, he's bound to not survive it. And then in which case, he's going to, like, lose that job. Or he just doesn't even start off with that work. And the ceiling's capped from there. It's like, there's I just don't see a way where he's actually the RB1. I mean, so and you, RB1. you got the quarterback change this year. They're moving over to Trey Lance. Obviously, that should, you'd expect them, they're maybe going to be running the ball more because they're not going to want to have him throw 25, 20 plus, 20 plus times a game. 20. I'm predicting a RG3 Alfred Morris type season for... Trey Lance and uh, Elijah Mitchell, where they just, you know, they run some options. They both have some nice big breakaway plays. And Elijah Mitchell just churns out, like, 80 to 100-yard games every week. Mitchell's, like, Mitchell's one of the f guys, probably, like, one of maybe, he might be the only guy on this list I don't actually know what to do with. He's a guy that I'm not going to fade, but he would need to probably drop a round after his ADP for me to be like, okay, yeah, I'll roll with him. I feel like every time... The place where he usually would go, every time you see him there, you're like, ah, I don't really want to take him here. I rather because it's always like middle of the fifth round where yeah. there's wide receivers like, like uh, Hollywood Brown, like Jerry. Give me Sutton over him every single time. Yeah, exactly. So it's like I would rather take the safe wide receiver, make make sure I got my running backs early so I don't have to depend on some fucking schmuck like Elijah Mitchell. Yeah. Uh anyone else on this list that you, you love? Uh, I like Chase Edmonds a lot. Oh yeah, dude, like that's him. funny. I hate Chase Edmonds this year. Like he, he seems like a guy you would hate. Because he just seems so, like, fucking, like, he's there, but why? Anytime somebody gets a, a decent opportunity, that's when you jump off of them. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's got a real shot to make it. Off my board. <laughs> I, you with, loved him when he was in the crowded backfield, standing behind David Johnson and James I mean, Conner I think he's still in that. a crowded backfield. It's probably yeah. even more crowded now. But now he's, like, the lead dog in the in the pound, you know? Like, before he was He's, like, the biggest the puppy out of the, the bunch of puppies. Like, he's not... Yeah, that means something. I'm not the sure. Puppy in the in the yard. I could see this porch. This end up being a role like weirdly similar to. Yeah, I like him, and I think I'll be drafting him. But I won't be surprised if we look back and like his role in Miami is not that much different than it was in Arizona, where it's like six carries a game, but he catches yeah. like five passes a game. Yeah. You know, like I don't think you bring in Sony Michelle. I don't think you bring in Raheem Moser if you don't plan to give them a bunch of carries, mm -hmm. especially on like the early down work. So if I'm drafting Edmonds, I'm I'm not look. I don't think he's getting 22 touches a game. So yeah, I'm I'm in on Chase. He he doesn't. He's just like one of the few guys. I feel like he doesn't need an injury really to happen down here for him to 
be able to sit in, in your flex for a while. Whereas, like, I feel like Kenneth Walker, Tony Pollard, uh, quarter, eh, Kenneth I'm, Walker, I love. Really? Love I don't know why. I but like, I think I like Penny too. more. I see, dude. I mean, you should. Every yeah. report is like he's, he's been w- he's been here for how many years? And he hasn't done shit. He gets hurt every year. He's trash. Stop buying into the guys that haven't done anything. Buy into the guy that can do as something. Soon, that as soon as Penny gets the opportunity, yeah. he's off. Did you <laughs> turn, done. Did you bro, turn he's football had his off? Chance. As soon as you get eliminated from fantasy playoffs, like week eleven, it's when you turn the TV off. Probably you, never. You didn't see what Penny did. The I saw Penny. I, he was great, but on for what? Like a team that was dying, and like Russell Wilson was already still dying. They're dead. I'm saying they're more dead on a declining team. With a coach who's getting older, probably on his way out. I love Pete Carroll, but I mean, what's he going to do with this team other than try and just run the ball? No, it's it's gonna not going to. It's like, going to be awful. This team's going to be so fucking yeah. So bad. whatever they're going to get fucking beaten to the ground within two weeks, and here comes Big Bad Kenneth Walker, the rookie in town, and he's just going to come and he's just going to dominate. I think. To be fair, like when this when the off season kicked off, like after the draft, Kenneth Walker was going like four rounds ahead of Rashad Penny. It was it was like really really bad, and then. Them two have flipped. I think Walker's well, going pretty far behind. According to this list here, Walker's still going quite a bit ahead of Penny. Yeah, I was looking yeah, at some. It's an order. I was looking at some underdog ADP, and that's obviously like the most up to date kind of yeah. shit. Um, this was off of a uh, sleeper, so maybe or not, by yeah. the end they get to those rounds. People, I don't know, but that's he's only a little bit ahead of them. Probably like the seventh round instead of the eighth. How do we I think find Penny was going like right at the end. I think Pete Carroll can be loyal to a fault, though, and I, I, I don't that's think. Why. Yeah, I don't think they would bring back Penny. If they weren't, remember like three or four years ago them. when they brought in Chris Carson? Oh no, they brought in Penny, dropped him the first round, and then still yeah. used Chris Carson. Yeah. yeah, exactly my point. You remember when they fucking paid Matt Flynn or whatever fifteen million or whatever the fuck it was? I think and it was then like forty fucking. It was million. An, yeah, it was like fifteen million a year. It was just stupid at the time. It was a lot. And uh, then they started Russell Wilson, the guy they drafted in the third round. Obviously, it was the right move. That's what I'm saying. They don't care about loyalty. They're gonna. This is the, it's a business. They're gonna put out the right. guy that's gonna win them the games. Here's no, the, they do care. Here's the thing, though. Like, you don't no hold on to Penny for five years. Like, they held on to him for so long for no fucking reason. Weren't used. And then, finally, P. Carroll got proven correct at the end of the four years. They give him the extension. And, like, I would have been okay with Kenneth Walker. But if you've listened to, like, anything out of Seattle camp, it's literally... I don't even know if Kenneth Walker has a role. It's literally, like, Penny's a 20-carry game guy. Yeah. Yeah. The third down role is going to this and this. It's the people watching the practices. Kenneth Walker's not getting yeah, any run. I believe the them. I just think what's going to happen is he's going to have like eleven carries, and, like, uh, and then that's it. He's done. I mean, maybe he's been doing it for four years. I don't think I want either of them. Realistically, the guy, the guy he played three games in four years. And everyone's like, "Oh, he's the guy." He did three. What did he play? Three games last year? Four? Probably like six. Six. Six great games. <laughs> six amazing games. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if I want any part. I mean, they're a terrible offense. Penny's going line. pretty fucking late, though. Yeah, they both are. Like the fact that you're getting them after Cordell, maybe you're not. But like, he's that. in that same range and and Singletary, like he obviously stands out amongst those guys. I think. Yeah, I think I'd rather have Tony Pollard than fucking Rashad Penny. Pollard's like unusable though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's my point. Like he's at least I know he's gonna get like some. <laughs> That's my point. Like, Rashad <laughs> Penny is gonna Bars. be <laughs> nothing by the end of the year. He won't be. You're gonna forget about him. Trust me. So to, if like Rashad Penny's Penny. gonna be nothing by the end of the year. Tony Pollard is gonna be nothing the whole year. Yes, <laughs> but I already know that. So. <laughs> So it won't hurt you. Yeah. Who do you think is the most dead out of all these guys listed? Devin I Singletary's got to be I up there. You'd pick. You're going Clyde. No. I actually no. no. Clyde wouldn't be that for me. I'm saying Damon Harris. That's I, insane. I would say Singletary. I would say Singletary. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to get like 12 carries a game, never get goal line work, never get pass catching work anymore. Yeah. He's like, like, he's he got a target a game. Yeah. That's it. Not James catcher. Cook's going to get the pass catching. Moss and Josh Allen are going to get a lot of goal line work. He's he's never going to have a fucking breakaway. Is play. Moss even still on the team, dude? Yeah, yeah. He's. I think he's going to get a decent amount of run this year. What's um, what's the deal with your boy Cordero? I wish I could tell you. Um, so versatile. So yes. awesome. So, so awesome. mysterious. But they were so fucking clear about how much they didn't want to use him last year. Like I remember when I picked him up in the or I traded for him in Town Get Town. I was like, yeah, I just like got an RB one for nothing. And then two weeks later, he was like an RB6. <laughs> they, just, they just didn't use... They started using him as like the, the fucking grinder and used uh, Mike Davis as the pass cat. I, you can't trust his fucking role in this offense. And you can't trust the offense. Just yeah. to begin with. Arthur Smith has come out. And it just like, seems like the Debo use. Samuel light. And it's just like, I don't know. I wouldn't mind having that if I can get him in the seventh, eighth round. Yeah, I don't... I, don't I just don't know what it actually is. Is he going to be Debo Samuel light? Or is it no. going to be... I actually think he takes a huge hit because most platforms... Took away his wide receiver eligibility. Yeah. I think that's huge. The fact that I can't throw him as a wide receiver. I don't give a shit. I'll put him at running back. Let's see. I, I think can... you're going to regret taking Cordero this year if it's anywhere in the single digit rounds. 
I probably won't. I'm just saying he's a guy that, like, I have a lot of intrigue in based off of the potential that he has. But like you said, like, I'm very nervous about, like, the mystery around him, like, how they actually use him. I am curious how they use him only because Mike Davis is gone now. Uh, they got Tyler Algier, eighth, <laughs> eighth string fucking running back. <laughs> um, and I don't know what, like, what they're going to use in the backfield this year. It could be, like, he just gets a fuckload of work because they got nothing else to do. You know, that that's, like, best case scenario. Otherwise, they don't want to use him like that. Another thing is they have Mariota now who's actually going to run the ball. Matt Ryan would always dump it off to Patterson. That's a good point. Dump off's not, not there anymore. Great fucking point, Judge. <laughs> Until they get Jimmy G. I'm not Until they Jimmy trade. G. Massive hole. To no the one 49ers. wants Jimmy G. His own <laughs> father <laughs> doesn't want Jimmy G. The other Better teams. Watch Falcons are making a move for him. They might be. Not it would make be. no sense, though, because they, they need to lose. Like, they don't why the fuck would games. we trade for Jimmy G? They don't need to win games right now. need a quarterback. Now. Yeah. That's so why what? they, that's why they need to lose games and draft one. Exactly. Facts. Bars. Is anyone in on Josh Jacobs this year? Hell Are we all out on him? I'm not out, but I'm not, like, looking for him. Like, you know, I'm not looking to take him, but if he's there, I need a running back. I don't think he's a bad option. Fifth round AP is just outrageous. Just seems gross. No, no, it is gross. I mean, is it? Like, what did he do last year? He did a pretty solid last year. I don't care what happened last year. New coaching staff that came in, declined his fucking contract immediately, brought in other running backs. Like, Yeah, it's a proven year. It's going to be a terrible committee. Signs there. are pointing against him. It's going to be – I mean, he'll be the starter there, but, like, I, I – his volume is going to go down probably like 20%. It's just going to be fucking ugly. You know, didn't Kareem Hunt request a trade? Yeah. And then he's like holding out kind of? He's at practice, but he still wants to trade. I mean, so he's a guy then, if he, he does get so traded, good, he? Yeah. depending on where he goes. Kareem he could, Hunt, absolutely. I don't think you could get me to draft him. Like, everybody going behind him right now, I'd take over him. Yeah, what if he gets traded to Buffalo? I mean, that's a whole different scenario. No but like, as, yeah, as of right now. The problem with Kareem Hunt is, like, he needs to be a starter. He needs to be a starting running back, and I don't know if he's ever going to get that chance right again. Yeah. If he gets moved in the middle of the summer, like middle August, there's no way he just takes over the starting running back yeah. role somewhere. I, I think he plays out in Cleveland. I don't think he really has any leverage. I think even if he stays on Cleveland, though, Dearness Johnson takes his job. Stop it. I'm, I'm serious, he's benched. man. You've been watching too many of Noah's fucking videos. Bro. I believe it, dude. <laughs> I believe it. Kareem Hunt just seems like a, a non-factor all around. I just, I, I don't think so, dude. I feel like if Jacoby Brissett is starting for most of the year, they're, yeah, they're the gonna only thing they're going to do game. is like fucking dump off to Hunt and give it to Nick Chubb. I'm like, I'm like okay drafting Kareem Hunt. I think where he's going, assuming he plays in Cleveland. I feel like drafting him is just sacrificing a roster spot. Really? Yeah, you're you're just willing to throw away a, a BN. Sheesh. All right, so I feel like we've gone through just about all of this list. What we have do we, about uh, two total guys that we like? What do we think? Is the it's RB dead, dead zone still, still dead? dead? It's very dead. It's so fucking dead. Judge sexual? Are we, yeah, uh, we got a final ruling. Dead as fuck. Sheesh. Yeah. All right. Hey, listen, you know, sometimes you think you're going to get something new, and you don't. RB dead zone still dead. What a shame. But I liked it a lot know. earlier in the year when, like, guys like Akers and Zeke were it all the way looking, down there. That's kind of why, like, when I, when I brought up this list and I was like, damn, like, a lot of the guys are gone. Like, because, you know, as you get closer to the draft, guys end up moving up. But the one guy we didn't talk about before we... we uh, J.K. Dobbins? Yes. The J.K. Injury. Dobbins. The injury's not good. The injury, yeah. obviously a concern, but I think he has the most upside on this entire list because he's obviously the best talent. I uh, Gus Edwards is not going to be ready for the start of the season. The way I would say, though, if... The way I'm looking at it is like if Gus Edwards was, I would I, w I wouldn't draft J.K. Dobbins anywhere because I think they would not they they don't want to rely on Dobbins, but I think they might have to. I don't, he's not going to be 100. percent There's a great no. fucking pile. Listen to uh, like you take him in the fifth round and you know or you know late four early five and then you know maybe you don't use him for two weeks. He's you know still sixth round. You gotta be. Yeah, you won't take him in the fifth. Uh, you know Dr. Chow, the former Chargers guy who everyone yeah, 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 yeah. So he does his own podcast. He had Evan Silva on like a few days ago, and I listened to it, and they went pretty in detail about Dobbins' injury, and he's he's like really, really concerned about the injury still because he tore so many different things in his knee, and he's like, he's clearly not ready. Could be forced to do a bigger role just because they don't have enough players there, but he's like, feel, Dobbins already feels like a guy that I want all of next year. You know what I mean? Like I think he'll have kind of a weak year this year. Yeah. Um, not to his talent level, but I'm, I'm probably out on Dobbins unless he really drops. You're in on Dobbs? I am if I can get him in like the late fifth. Like I think it obviously team, you know, depends on my team that I have at the, at that point. But like he's a guy I, I definitely just because of the upside. Like I, I like him as a talent. Like, if he can get over the injury, I think That's he's gonna the have thing though. Like I don't want to draft somebody who's already got an injury coming to the year. But when I, it's more of like when you're looking at who he's next to, like sitting there, like and I'm looking at like him or uh, AJ Dillon or Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Like I'm probably gonna take him over. Taking AJ Dillon. I'd take Elijah Mitchell over him. I would take Elijah over him, too, just because of the... I know he's going to play. All these fucking names just look the same to me. 
Yeah. We're all just like, hate that, <laughs> that I mean, that's just that. how you know the dead zone is, is dead. dead. Yeah. It's real. All right. Um, so that's a dead zone running back. Chatter. Chatter. Got him. Get him. <laughs> Let's talk uh, inside the office. We got a lot of shit going on. The brand. <laughs> the brand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So you guys are watching this Sunday. Tomorrow, we've got the BDG3 NFT pass minting. Yes. Big day. Huge fucking day. Uh, if you want any information about it and you have no idea what the fuck we're talking about, you can go to bdg3.xyz. That'll be in the description. Um, basically, this NFT project we've been working on for a long time. We've had to pivot a lot along the way, but I'm excited for the mint day. I'm a little bit, you know, nervous. We need the big dogs to obviously show out for it. Um, but it should be a fun week. We got the the whitelist minting on Monday, 24 hours, then the waitlist for 24 hours, and it goes to public sale for three days. Hopefully, we sell out before then. Um, and then we can celebrate a little bit. Yep. Also got the Sleeper Bowl coming on Tuesday. What time is that? <laughs> uh, at, this point, at this point, I honestly don't know. Because they keep telling a- us in Central a- time, Eastern. that doesn't help uh, me. See, that's not right at or all. Or 8 p.m. Central. Yes. 8 p.m. Central. 7.45 Central. 9 p.m. Eastern. 8.45 Eastern. 8.45 Eastern. We'll have a little uh, pre-game a little pre- live, yeah. live show. Uh, we'll be hosting it this year. We got a fucking really good crew of of people in the league. Yep. If you haven't seen the uh, video for the draft order, you can find that on Nick's Twitter account or the sleeper Twitter account. They Electric posted Royal the, uh, the slumber rumble to determine the draft order for this sleeper bowl. So you can see that there. I play the rumble chaos in the sleeper dome. Nothing but limbs flying all over the ring. Slaps make chops. I've never seen anything I like it. I can't believe that. We've got a lot of people playing dead right now. I'm not sure if that's a good strategy or not, but it seems to be working. It is starting to get, Chaotic in the ring right now. I cannot even keep up with all the action. Double team! <laughs> play, the play, whole, whole, play the whole 10 minute video right now. 167,000 views it got on Twitter. That's a good video. That's what a, a, what a time to be dead. Yeah, so uh, we got the Super Bowl. We're hosting it. AJ Dillon's going to be on stream with us, Tyler Algier, and then a bunch of fucking nerds in the fantasy industry, whom we love uh, very much. We'll be hosting it live from the office, so make sure you fucking uh, put on your calendars, write it on your wife's forehead so you do not forget. 9 p.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday night. Uh, what else we got going on? It's been a fucking hectic ass summer. I'm surprised we get the shit done that we do. Honestly, it's mostly you guys. I feel like I'm in my own world, like editing videos, and that's just what I worry uh, about. It's a but big like, part of you know what goes on here. Yeah, but like I'll be I'll be trying to tell other people outside of you know our office like what we do, and like between the big dog bash and the sleeper bowl and just all the other shit, I'm like. I don't know how shit gets done. <laughs> it just gets done. Maybe. It kind of just I finds a way of getting done. Honestly, I feel like we do 30% of what we're capable of doing sometimes. Maybe. Yeah, which is why I'm surprised it gets done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I think the problem like, is why? because we have like 10 different things. So if you go 100% on like you're going to leave one with zero, you have to have some type of a healthy balance. 30% it's been pretty good, pretty good balance. I went out. Well, I was thinking about it like people looking at it from the outside must be like, oh, they do so much shit. Like, how do they get that all done? And I'm sitting here sometimes like, we're not, not doing, doing shit right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, we could be doing so much fucking more, you know? That's, I don't know. I mean, we're, we're doing a lot right now. We yeah. have a lot of fucking opportunities coming our way and a lot of cool stuff. Season like, hasn't even started yet, so. I know. Maybe, let's pump the brakes. We're going to be pretty I'm busy, really, really excited for the season to start because it means all the bullshit we've been dealing with is finally fucking over, you know? That's it. The summer it's is... Time for new bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just like... Oh, the, this entire NFL season is literally just going to be like talking, watching football, talking football, watching football, talking football. Like every year. You've been every doing this for for how many years now? Come on. Yeah. You know. You know what Yeah, it's but like. it's going to be fun this year. Yeah, well, you know? yeah. That's why That's why we got all this. this it's like going to help. It's like the bash will be fucking in full swing, so we don't have to worry about creating that, promoting it. Super Bowl will be done. The draft guide is already fully fucking live. It's like all this shit that it's been nonstop worrying about for like two months is Done, and we don't got to. I don't. I don't have to do. A, I'm not. We're not done. doing anything right now, so that's why you feel like that. I'm going on vacation for the yeah, for where are you September going? to December. Permanent vacation. Yeah, Hawaii maybe. A little far. I don't want to be near y'all. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to 34th <laughs> just to get away on Penn Station. Yeah, but on, but on eighth. Oh, all right. Uh, that'll probably wrap up. Anything else we got to cover inside the, the brand? Elf? Was there anything else? Was it just those two? That's why I just asked you. That's what I'm asking you. <laughs> Is there anything else? You, you were the one that had the brand stuff, so I didn't know if there was anything else in your head there. Oh, uh, I didn't. Yeah, I don't know. Anything else we need to announce? No. All right. <laughs> okay. So, That's it. Dudes. First episode of an unnamed podcast. Thank you for hanging out with us. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thumbs up button and follow us on all the fucking social medias. Hit it hard. Thank <laughs> you.